Have you ever sewn a pair of jeans or any type of cargo pants, a man's shirt, or anything that requires a flat fail seam? Hello everybody, Andrea here with Sew to Fit. I appreciate you for dropping in. This is a flat fail seam and a flat fail seam is used to strengthen or to make the seam look like it does not have any extra seam allowance on the inside, meaning that it's flat from the top on the outside and from the inside of the garment. It is not like a French seam that you see a part or a channel on the inside of the seam. This literally is flat from the back and from the front or from the inside. There are three types of flat fail seams that are available for you to sew. One of them is specifically made for jeans. The now, one I'm going to show you today is the one that is specifically made for denim jeans or even cargo pants, but mostly denim jeans. The other one is a common flat fail seam and a common flat fail seam is one that is as well shown from one side. You can see the picture here. It is made pretty much the same way as a jean or denim type of flat fail seam. But in this particular case for the denim, you're not going to have to uh, do any special uh, folding after the fact when you're done sewing the seam and that to me can create a situation where it is an uneven fold. Whereas with the mock flat fail seam, the mock flat fail seam is, is sewn like a regular seam and then pressed flat on the inside of the garment with the stitching or serger stitching showing and it creates a regular flat folded or regular flat seam and then you just top stitch along the lines on the outside. That is considered a mock flat fill seam. So today we're going to be doing the regular flat fill seam that's made for denim jeans. The download that I give for my patrons is something that is given on a monthly basis. This is an entire series of techniques. Each month or whenever I give this download, which is a series of multiple notebook projects that you would include in your series binder or in your technique binder that would go into the binder that i have provided on my shop so today we're going to do the flat fail seam used for jeans so the first thing you're going to have as the instructions say you're going to need to have two long pieces of uh, fabric nine inches by four inches is what i use for my sample notebooks for these types of uh, sample techniques so in this case go ahead and cut your nine by four inch pieces of fabric which is going to help you get started as we move through this step i'm going to be doing it at the sewing machine and you'll see step by step how i actually sew it together and as i sew it together you'll be able to follow along on your instruction sheet if you so choose to download that instruction sheet. If you don't, I hope this is very useful for you. Otherwise, Jeez. I appreciate you for following and watching this video. And, um, you know, I hope it helps you and I hope you learn something. Okay, let's get started. All right, as the instructions say, you have the right side and the wrong side of the fabric. We're going to place the fabric wrong sides together in order to utilize this material and end up with a 1 4th inch seam finish on our garment, we need to make sure that we start out right here. We need to make sure that we start out with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. In order to do the first step, you're going to offset or you're going to place the top layer over the back layer or lower layer. You're going to place it 1 4th inch from the raw edge so this is the top layer and this here is the bottom layer you're going to replace this 1 4th inch atop this first one so the first step in doing this is to fold the bottom layer around or fold it over the top layer and that's just pretty much just wrapping it around the top layer once you do that you're going to go ahead and start stitching. Now at this point you can press this down or you can pin it in place. If you need to pin it in place that's really good. You could go ahead and do that. That way you'll make sure it remains in its solid place while you stitch. 
Once you have aligned it one fourth of an inch from the raw edge, the top layer one fourth of an inch from the raw edge of the bottom layer, now you're going to wrap this around. As I said before, you're going to wrap it around the bottom layer, okay? Tightly wrap it around, sort of like kind of making sure that it's truly folded inside, fold it over to where it's truly touching the inside raw edge. Now, the next step is to stitch it along the edge. We're stitching the top along the edge, which has the top layer encased. So we're stitching along that raw edge. So we stitch that. And this is considered edge stitching. We are edge stitching along this raw edge that has been folded over the upper layer. You can press it in place because sometimes this moves. If that's uncomfortable for you, go ahead and press it. And I'm just going to backstitch for it to be in my sample notebook. I am using a number eight Bernina foot, which is for made for jeans. I'm using a jean top stitching foot, so that is why you see that, okay? All right, so the next step is, you can see on the back side that top stitching or edge stitching shows to the right side, okay? Now, you can press this and make it nice and flat that's going to make a difference in the end the next thing you do is open it up now you have the raw edge that way and you have a nice smooth edge this way it would make sense for you to already know that you don't want to fold it back this way with the raw edges showing you want to fold it the other way where the raw edges are encased once those raw edges are encased, you can see in the back where there is a visible seam, but no visible seam allowance. What we have totally created here is an encased seam inside of this part that becomes the top stitching on a pair of jeans, which is like this here. It would go upward. So the smoother part would be down here and the thicker part would be up the, at the top. So now we're going to go ahead and top stitch this section here. Now, you may have a sewing machine that has a top stitching foot. If you do not have a sewing machine that has a top stitching foot, maybe you can find or have a sewing machine that has an edge stitch foot. I have a sewing machine that I purchased that has an edge stitch foot, which means that I can control how much my needle stitches from the edge of this fold. So at this point, number four, you're gonna open this up, press it to the left side or press it to the right side or press it down, whichever one you're working on. If this is uh, the pair of pins for the side seam, then you would press it towards the back or press it towards however it is that it's the back, you're gonna press it towards the back. If it is the yoke in the back, then you're gonna press it upward to close it in right there. Okay, so now let's go ahead and place this under my needle. Now on the Bernina sewing machine, I have to move the needle to the left two times in order for it to it be put along this edge. So that's something that I have to do for my sewing machine. Your sewing machine may be different as far as where you would place your needle. So let's uh, go ahead and get started with this. Now at this halfway point, I want to show you how I got this extremely heavy stitch without using a double needle. What I utilized in order to be able to use this or get this look on every one of my stitches, I, instead of buying top stitching thread for denim, you want to be able to control the color. So in order to do that, what I did is I utilized what we call 
a triple stitch is one that goes back and forth back and forth so it requires a lot more control for you so this is something that you're going to have to uh, do when you're working with your sewing machine now that I've finished the first half of this stitch you can see it is complete okay I'm going to keep going and I'm going to show you the triple stitch that I did on this one moving my needle over twice I still need to control the, the needle placement all right so take a look at that isn't that a beautiful stitch I love how that stitch came out now if you want to do it on this side as well like I did here what you would need to do is go ahead and stitch along this line here to take the place of what is there before if you were to use this one here I'm going to leave this the way it is and I'm going to move down to where the other triple stitch is so what I would do in my case is I would place this in the same spot but I would go over two on the other side of my line and I can feel and I can tell where my sewing machine is aligning in that spot so when I'm done I can remove this stitch because everything will be in place from the back and from the front and I don't have to worry about it coming apart so let's go ahead and do that alright this is what I get if you stop, top stitch or you had the same color thread and you top stitched over that it would be perfect so now at this point if you had basted that under stitching you could just go back now and just remove it just as easily as you put it in you have to take it out from the front because in the back my thread is the same color but normally I would use a different color bobbin so I can see it but if that was basted you get my point aside from needing to remove that other color thread if it was the same exact color you would be able you would not be able to see it because I actually stitched right over the other thread and gave myself the true look of a, a stitch that looks like a triple stitch or looks like jean thread that has the double stitching and you can see here that it would be showing the double stitching on the front which appears to be like a regular top stitching thread for denim and on the back it looks exactly like maybe a chain stitch that is double impact and this creates an extremely tight seam for jeans which we wear pretty hard and it makes it look similar on both edges the folded back edge and the part that looks smooth and that looks like one regular top stitch which is what this one looked like compared to a single thread and compared to a triple needle thread I mean a triple thread a triple seam when you're using your sewing machine so this is what you get if you use the correct color thread underneath in the bobbin and on the top I use the green thread to show you the difference in the two but basically you would use the same color in the upper and lower thread and bobbin thread so that you can see how this comes out which is this right here that is a beautiful seam to me okay so we're going to go ahead and move forward and as we move forward we're going to see all of the other different types of flat fail seams that we have and you'll be able to download the instructions to help you to be able to utilize this in your sew to fit sample notebook for all of your different tutorials that you may choose to receive or get from my shop all right that was it so now you see how you can have this beautiful top stitch seam for your denim jeans whether it be on this angle for your uh, denim jeans for the yoke in the back or whether it be for the straight seam on your side seams or on your inseams in your jeans this may not work as well for thin fabrics but I do know it would work well with some bottom weight some uh, maybe even cargo pants especially and 
in order to use it for a shirt, men's shirt, your shirt, or anything like that, you'll have to use regular lightweight thread because using this triple thread that I showed you, you know, it can make it pucker really badly on your regular fabric. All right, so I hope that came out really nice for you guys. I appreciate you for following this tutorial and following this series. If it is helpful for you in the long run, you will be able to download the entire ebook with all of the instructions for all of the different techniques which is more than 27 to 30 plus techniques plus the instruction videos to go along with them you can wait for that or you can download each one individually but as the as i get to the point where every last one of them are done you'll be able to download or pre-order the entire series of videos okay that goes with this. Yeah. I want to thank you guys for following Sew to Fit and supporting my Patreon page so that you can continue to get extra details and extra downloads, which this download is part of the Patreon club. And if you support that uh, Patreon page, you will always get these downloads whenever I create a new video tutorial. Okay, so look forward to seeing you on the other side of the internet. Bye.